So today I'm just going to go through some questions that had popped up in the feed and give a little feedback here. I identify very much with the labels of empath, open heart, and anxious preoccupied attachment struggles. My partner is likely fearful, anxious, or disorganized attachment style. We're both aware that we have attachment challenges, and after a couple of years of experiencing situations that have led us to break up, when we are triggered, we've recently had some very open discussions around attachment. Is there any advice on how I can respond to when he withdraws or how to respond when he is feeling very triggered? When he's anxious, it's easier because I can relate and easily soothe and reassure and repair happens quickly, but when he withdraws and I'm triggered into anxiety, I struggle to know what, do, what to do or to say to him. I'm learning to soothe myself more in these times, but I want to develop some tools for how to respond to him. So I have been actually exploring these ideas about being triggered. This may actually be a circumstance in which not reacting or be being respond doing like getting into doing mode or responding mode to try and fix his feelings so that you can feel more comfortable about he's how he's feeling right then you know that is sort of where this is where sometimes inaction is action right the action of inaction so that's that's where the work is actually more internal for this person who's who's asking that becomes a work where you start to access that rock in your gut and you allow the emotions and the anxiety to flow through you and you just kind of surrender to it and let it kind of burn itself out um, and be aware of different tools and methods that you can use to allow that energy to discharge without necessarily sort of like emotionally dumping on the partner and or sort of fall slipping into more enmeshed dynamics, right? So you had mentioned identifying with this idea of being an empath, an empath. So there's lots of research done on different ways we experience empathy. Anecdotally, I would say that I've observed there to be three types of empaths. And the first is a diffuse empath, the second is a fix-it empath, and the third is a secure empath. And so uh, a diffuse empath is someone who feels someone else's emotions in their body as if they are their own and they are not able to discern if it is their emotion or somebody else's emotion okay now the fix-it empath can typically discern they feel someone else's emotions in their body as if they are their own but they can discern where it's coming from and they may know that it's not mine and so they go about trying to fix whatever they think the problem is for their partner so that their partner feels better so that they can start to feel better and stop feeling that way now the secure empath, and ideally everyone on this planet should be able to accomplish this, is when you are able to be with someone's emotions, you know that they are feeling something, and your mirror neurons allow you to access your own information about that thing that they are feeling, right? So, so that you are able to have a shared experience. and. However, even in that moment, as you were like, that person's feeling sad, I know this is what I know of that sad feeling because I've had that feeling in this circumstance before, being aware of what is yours, right? So it's almost like you're able to sort of draw these psychic lines around, okay, so this is what they're feeling and this is what's being activated in me, but I know that this is where they begin and end and this is where I begin and end and I know that this is what encompasses their experience and this is what encompasses my experience and we have these two parts that are similar but there are also these aspects of this experience that are different and i'm allowing that feeling to come up within me and to be reminded of what that's like so that i can be empathically present with this person but i i i know and i have experienced and processed those feelings for myself well enough to have faith that I am not going to be overwhelmed by them and I am not going to be overwhelmed by myself and I'm but I am able to access those feelings of my own well enough that I can be empathically present with this person I can allow them to move through me and not take on too much responsibility for them and I can allow them to have their feelings now if you try and fix fix it too much 
then it's not safe for your partner to have their feelings because they're like, I can't have my feelings around you because you just try to fix it for me. And then I feel like, and then I feel like I'm creating a problem for you. So it's not safe for me to have a problem around you. Now, in a context of a romantic relationship, you are not expected to be your partner's therapist, certainly, right? You don't want to take on that role. Um, but, but there is some skill there that can be tapped into. Maybe it's easier to think of it in the context of friendship, but let's say because, because we have a lot tied up in the narrow focus of romantic relationship, we tend to think of our romantic partners as being the cure-all for everything. But if you, maybe it's easier to conceive of this in a, part, in, in a friendship. So imagine that you have a friend who, this is like a friend is really upset and grieving, and you go and you comfort them, and you're reminded of when your grandmother died, right? And and so you allow a few tears to fall and you hold their hand and you say, I, I can imagine how difficult that must be. I'm, I know what that feels like and let me know if there's anything I can do for you. But, but not having to you know, give advice, right? Advice giving is, is probably the number one way in which we try to fix someone else's issues so that we feel better about ourselves, right? So you know, you got to keep a stiff upper lip for your for your siblings or for your daughter or for your parents or for your spouse, right? Oh, you know, just give it time. Just give it time. They just need time, right? Um, or get back to work. Distract yourself. Do other things. Um, you know, uh, what are some of the other ones? Replace the loss, right? Hey, you're upset about that? Let's go get you a new puppy, right? Sorry about your dog. Let's go get you a new puppy. Or um, <laughs> the best way to get over someone is to get under somebody else, right? <laughs> so, you know, really what we need to do is rather than search for quick fixes or solutions or escapes, short-term escapes, allow yourself to have the feeling. Allow yourself to have the feeling. Then, you know, don't burn out on distractions, right? Seek out others who, who do understand that feeling and who can provide you some support that you feel empathically mirrored. Try to re-engage with things that bring you joy, that allow you to experience a sense of vitality. Because really what's going to help you weather the storm of a difficult circumstance, whether you are partnered or not, is being on fire about life and being connected to what lights you on fire about life, regardless of your circumstances, regardless of whether you are single or partnered. I hope that gives you a little bit of uh, a foundation on which to start to think about these things.